past <clears throat> that if we are able to create our base energy, which is sexual energy in this particular case, and we are able to channelize it to higher levels, then it creates geniuses and people of very fine intellect. Also, there is the, the question, if you do it with brute force, it shouldn't be done. That's what uh, Swami Vivekananda said. Or is that what you are saying? <laughs> okay, so it's, it's not possible with brute force. <clears throat> Even though I've read the works of Swami Vivekananda, but I thought maybe I missed out on this one. And if you go down the route of pranayama or khechri mudra, then it's not, it's, it seems unattainable. Now, I don't know where to begin. Um, and I don't know how much truth one can handle. Nevertheless, it's my job to tell you the truth. I don't believe even for one second, and I speak from experience, that attempting or mastering Ketri Mudra converts your sexual energy into higher energy, or that it reduces your lustful thoughts, or anything even remotely close to that. On what basis do I say it? <clears throat> I can do Ketri Mudra. And my guru could do Ketri Mudra. And my Param Guru, who was in a Ghori, he could do Ketri, Unmani, Manonmani, Aghochri, and there's another one called Charchari. Five different kinds of mudras. In fact, yes, Naga Baba used to tell me, and I've heard similar stories. I don't think Naga Baba would make it up. There is no reason. He said uh, his um, Harinam Das Aghori was his name. He lived with him for eight years. And he would uh, go out, uh, he would drink 40 bottles of liquor every day. Talk about uh, transmutation. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> he would go out in the Ganges, he would um, take out his tongue and wash the whole thing. He had uh, elongated his tongue so much that when it would be relaxed, I don't know how much truth in that is, but yogic scriptures say it goes all the way to your chest and his wood. But I don't know what you would do with a tongue that big, <laughs> but that's beside the point. <clears throat> now, pranayama kind of flushes your body with fresh oxygen. It calms you down, but it does not mean that it is going to remove you. It is going to purge you of uh, lustful thoughts. There is a term in yoga called Urdhva Retas. Retas was a term that was used for creative energy. Over a period of time it got distorted and got a term that got strictly used for sexual energy. Even more so, just the semen. And Urdhva Retas is if you draw up your semen. And then people engaged in other kind of things, drawing up Vajroli, Amroli, Sajoli, and uh, similar other Kriyas that I am, and then Mulutejna and other that I will just draw it up. But where will you draw it up? There is no such passage in the physical body. So there is so much uh, of myth and confusion out there. And 70% responsibility of that rests with crooks who know that almost every human being, especially men, are suffering from this either guilt or, or feeling that, oh, I have too many sexual thoughts. Let me give them a Kriya, which A, either they can't master, or two, even if they do, they will say, I haven't done it right because I still have sexual thoughts. Here's the thing, okay? I said it earlier as well. 
if you are eating food you will have sexual thoughts you will have sexual energy in you as long as you're not dead you will have lustful thoughts they die with you because what the humans have deemed immoral is not what nature's view is on this issue nature is simply interested in growing and nature because it's interested in growing it has given man the seed and woman the womb and that is why for example mood swings in women are not in their control they just cannot control it nature has made it a certain way every month the womb is prepared to carry a seed and then it dismantles the endometrium or whatever that wall is called i don't know exactly i'm not a doctor in men something similar happens if you release your sexual fluids voluntarily one thing if you don't it will happen involuntarily all those people who claim that's not the case are simply just talking crap what can happen and that also i can tell you from a first hand experience when you meditate for long hours you gain a sort of amazing control on your thoughts so sexual thoughts will not bother you because you have understood the essence that everything is essentially empty that if i don't give any particular thought any importance it will just go away so you are not driven by your sexual thoughts and consequently you don't waste your sexual energy and you said you know until um, it's by brute force it's uh, very hard and so on i never used brute force but i lived my life in a very vedic fashion and there was no struggle because sex is also a form of energy and it's compelling form of energy 